So yeah, uh, this project is on the um, prediction of stability for double transition metal vaccines. Um, as a bit of an overview, let me just zoom in a little. Um, vaccines are a set of graphene-like materials, um, but unlike graphene, they offer a unique synthesis approach. Um, they, they are synthesized from a bulk phase, which means that it's easier to fabricate them. And then from that bulk phase, you can chemically exfoliate to derive the 2D material like here due to the weaker bonds between certain atom types. Um, within this family of maxines, there is a large domain of possible combinations. We can have different types of atoms on each of these specific sites. So what that means is we have this domain of something like 9,000 possible maxines, and we want to know which of these are like the candidates for synthesis because obviously we can't test all 9,000 of them in a lab. Um, so what we want to do is implement a semi-supervised learning approach to try and predict which ones we can synthesize. Um, the reason we're doing this is because we have a really unique machine learning problem where there are very few published examples of maxines. In this case, when we're looking at double transition metal maxines, we have somewhere around 70 of this domain of 8,000, 9,000 possible combinations. So in addition to that issue, uh, we also have the situation where most of the published results are published, or they are, um, sorry, most of the published results are positive. They are um, successful examples of synthesis. So what that means is that we have to implement a framework which we've adopted from Frey et al called Positive Unlabeled Materials Machine Learning. And we use this to predict how confident we are that any given vaccine can be synthesized. Uh, we predict a score between zero and one, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, as far as how we generate the features for this machine learning algorithm, we did it with high throughput density functional theory. And this is where a lot of the open science comes in. So we did our calculations with VASP, which itself is not, um, it's not able to be published in an open source way. But what we did is we parsed the results from this with an open source Python library called Atomate2. Um, basically, it's a set of computational workflows and parsers. Uh, we use that to extract the basic results from the, um, from the VASP files. And then from there, we created a sim tool, which we've discussed earlier today, to kind of define how we're making the choices here to create a clearly defined workflow of inputs directly to outputs in a robust way that meets these fair data principles that we've been talking about a lot today. Um, so yeah, from this, we generate features such as formation energy, cohesive energies, um, lattice parameters, things you get from density functional theory. And we feed these to our semi-supervised model. We use this to predict a score of how likely something is to be synthesized. And that's this plot I'm showing down here. So zero is unlikely to be synthesized, one is most likely. And we see that we've generated about 600 maxines, which we expect to be likely candidates for synthesis. Um, so as far as next steps for this work, um, we have this list of candidates. Ideally, we want to implement an active learning approach with experimental collaborators who can try to synthesize these. And then we can better inform our model and this cycle continues. And um, eventually, once we have a good model, we can shift the property to optimize from something like synthesizability to other more direct applications. Uh, thank you for your time. Also, uh, if anyone wants to see the SIM tool itself, it's on GitHub here. And this also links to the tool hosted on NanoHub.